Good. Now, um, let me wrap up the introduction of Faraday's law with this. Um, so, because I have good memory, you will always find me always writing down this minus sign. That's part of the Faraday's law. You forget it, you did something wrong. It's like forgetting this minus sign here. It's uh, one of those uh, serious sign errors. And, um, but the thing is, it's uh, hard to really know intuitively what the, in, uh, what the, what the um, effect or the consequence of this minus sign is. Um, that's why uh, we give this minus sign its own name. In your textbook, that minus sign is called Lenz's law. And we have a whole description of consequence of Lenz's law. But what I want to tell you now is that you know, when you hear Lenz's law, it's not a separate law. It is a part of Faraday's law. But it's uh, you know, this one particular somewhat abstract part of Faraday's law that we are giving you this uh, word description for so that you can apply it. When you do it this correctly, you can be sure that you got the directions correctly, and you can kind of forget about this minus sign. But in upper division level work, this minus sign will you know, naturally give you the same result that Lenz's law is giving you. So let me describe uh, Lenz's law, because um, it's a way to uh, try to get at this thing that's hard to figure out just uh, purely mathematically, because it's too abstract. It comes down to this. So when we use the motion of voltage, uh, induce the voltage, uh, the result we got is that the current that you would induce, that the current goes um, uh, clockwise, right? Yes, that's what you got. So it might feel like you got more out of this uh, motion induced voltage business than you got out of uh, uh, Faraday's law. Because with Faraday's law, I, you know, put my hand up, I don't know anything about direction, I'm just gonna, um, um, try to calculate the magnitude. And what I'm telling you is that Faraday's law also gives you the direction. And the direction given by Faraday's law will agree with the direction given by motional voltage, motion induced voltage. So uh, let me, um, I guess, write down Lenz's law. It's a, a bit uh, complicated law. Actually, let me turn this off. I just realized how annoying that blinking thing would be. Um, so uh, let me try to state Lenz's law here. Lenz's law. Um, let's see. So it's related to Faraday's law, where change in magnetic flux induces the vol uh, voltage, right? And this voltage is going to induce current if it's conducting path, right? All of that is reasonable so far? Okay, so Lenz's law deals with the current. It says that the direction of induced current, that is the current that you would get from the voltage in Faraday's law, it says direction of induced current opposes the, the change of the change of magnetic flux that induced it. Does the meaning of this clear enough? It's a bit of a complicated sentence. So let me illustrate what I mean here. So, um, so here, when you, as this boundary moves to left, when you look at the direction of, um, direction of change of magnetic flux, what direction would you say magnetic flux is changing? Like if you treat magnetic flux like a vector-like quantity. It's coming out of the board more, right? Okay, so, so that's the change in magnetic flux. What Lenz's law tells you is that um, the induced voltage around this loop, it's going to generate a current. And the current must be generated in such a way that this change is being opposed, meaning the magnetic field due to this loop of current should point into the board. That's gonna be uh, opposing this change here, right? 
So what direction of current should it be? Clockwise or counterclockwise so that the chain, the, the magnetic field due to induced current opposes this that's coming out of the board. Clockwise, right? So this is a so-called rule, clockwise loop of current, magnetic field points into the board. That's the same direction we got with the motion of voltage. Yeah. And actually, this uh, Lenz's law, it makes, um, it makes a physical sense. In fact, if it was the other way, you would get a really absurd result. Uh, let me show you why. So let's go back to the initial picture for motion of voltage. And uh, well, I'm not going to get to all of it. So, but uh, I think I, have a, I can demonstrate the demo. Um, I'm not going to be able to get to motor. Um, that will be some of your lab, and we'll maybe talk about it a little bit more later. Um, so this clockwise current, it was set up by this loop that's moving to the right, right? Now, I want you guys to think of the force on this loop, not because of this velocity, but because of this current, I, that's flowing in this loop, you know, clockwise direction. So what direction is the force on this loop due to this current? Well, I is that more. So um, this is where you have to use the modified version of the magnetic force, as in magnetic force on wire is equal to I um, L cross B, right? So you know direction of current cross B. So direction of current cross B. What direction is the force? To the left, right? So because of this current. Because of this current here, there is going to be, uh, how do I draw this? So this is getting very cluttered. Uh, because of that um, current, there is going to be a leftward magnetic force. What does that do to this initial velocity that it had? Yeah, it's going to decrease, right? It's going to slow down. So this is what you would see physically. Um, and you know, if I could actually set it up. If this is a region of strong magnetic field, and I throw it in here, as it goes through, it's going to slow down. Because as it tries to pass through, there will be a current generated here. And direction of current will be such a way that the you know, I cross B will oppose the direction it's already moving. So it will slow down, come to a stop, and you know, stop. Now, I want you to imagine. What if the, this was a plus sign? What if Lenz's law was the exact opposite? That the direction of induced current um, not opposes, but like strengthens the change of magnetic flux that induced it. Like what, what will happen as this moves into the magnetic field? It will speed up, so you know, when anything, something moves here, it will like, get launched away. And, like, you know, your intuition says that if something slows down to stop, you can understand it, right? Mechanical energy went into some thermal energy. In fact, if you have a current flowing, it has resistance, you're going to get joule heating. So it makes sense that you're going to lose it mechanical energy. The other picture is just an absurdity, where, like, if it just takes off, like, where is that energy coming from? And um, this is the way that you can understand something called eddy current. So let me actually pass this around. Oh, I don't have, well. Um, so I'm going to pass it around. I just, because there's not enough time per person, I just want you to flip it up and down to see how it behaves as it, um, I need one of this. <laughs> yeah. Um, as this, uh, so you know, just to flip it up and down to see how it falls. And I just want you to pass it around because I only have three of these. Um, maybe I should get more. So what I want to show you is that, um, so in, this is a, just a copper uh, tube. There's nothing special about it, just with a hole here so that you can see what's inside. And inside the copper tube are two, um, so these are, uh, two pieces of silver things. One of them is magnet, and the other is not. I have this oscilloscope here, so I can figure out which is the magnet. Okay, this is the magnet, right? This is just a piece of iron. And with this piece of iron, um, you see that there's nothing special about this. I dropped this, um, so with this piece of iron, I just drop it, and 
like just drops through. Nothing special. Now, something special happens with the magnet. So when I drop this magnet, it takes an awful long time to drop. I mean, is it, I mean, you know, this is copper. Copper is not ferromagnetic. It doesn't actually attract the magnet, but um, the magnet, so it, this is losing mechanical energy. As it falls down, it has some potential energy here, but by the time it drops down here, well, it doesn't have any more kinetic energy. Whereas when you look at a piece of copper, um, so a piece of iron, it's uh, dropping down you know, fast because the potential energy is turning into kinetic energy. So um, the explanation for why this happens is because of Faraday's law. It's because of Faraday's law and Lenz's law. As this magnet moves through, it induces current in it that opposes the change of magnetic flux that generates the current loop inside of this copper tubing that generates its own magnetic field when all of this uh, uh, considered together ends up opposing the, uh, it generates a force opposed to the direction of the magnet movement. So, the fan, so you know, uh, there are some excellent YouTube videos that you can look at that we, I guess, wouldn't look at in class. Um, this is called the eddy current. The current that's produced in the, um, on the surface of the, um, on the, uh, with, on the, you know, within this uh, uh, copper material, it's called the eddy current. It's because you have that loops of voltage and all, it's all conducting path. So there's gonna be some current there. It's just sort of not well defined. It's a, you know, it looks like an eddy. <laughs> it's called the eddy current. And that eddy current is responsible for slowing this magnet down so that it falls over a very long period of time. Um, and that eddy current also takes out the mechanical energy, turns it into heat energy that's dissipated along this copper tube. 